promo Gohan. Ultimate Gohan? Hmm. Say less. Hey YouTube, welcome back to Unix TCG, and today we are going over some new releases, some spoilers from Set 2 Blazing Aura with a promo thrown in as well. So we're going to have a lot of fun with that. Um, I want to let you guys know that we are coming out this week with the Breaking Down Red Patreon article. It's going to be the follow-up to the Breaking Down Green, which was a 30-page article on how to build, how to play against, how to play like logic, sequencing, and we're going to be doing that with Red as well. So I hope you guys stay tuned for that if you're already in the Patreon. And if not, maybe you should think about joining today because we've already got some great stuff up there for Fusion World and a uh, code card giveaway that people can join right now. So with that being said, we're going to set this a light goal for uh, 100 as we normally do. And uh, yeah, hopefully we just really enjoy these spoilers. A lot of people have a lot of things to say about this, and so do I. So let's actually hop over to the template and start talking about these cards. So the first one we're going to talk about is actually the new pre-release promo. Um, it got released a little bit ago, but I didn't go over it in the last video because I didn't know how we were going to get it, and I didn't want to put something in here that wouldn't affect the set to meta. But here we go. It is here. And um, like I said in many other videos, if you guys know anything about me playing Dragon Ball Super, what is now called Masters, Adult Gohan is my jam. Like, I got a Gen Con regional win with U7, uh, Ultimate Gohan. I love Ultimate Gohan. So this, this is it right here. I'm winning four pre-releases because I need four gold cards. It's just going to be how it is. Sorry, guys. But that being said, um, this card is excellent. It is a four cost and a 20k, 5k combo power. And it says right here, permanent your turn if your leader is awakened. This card gains plus 20k power. So a lot of people might be thinking, okay, 4k for, um, or four cost for 40k is actually pretty great no matter what you do. Uh, we can see that it has a bunch of good traits being Sand, Earthling, Universe 7, and T.O.P. So when it comes to that... You play him in U7 coup, and he can start a very, very hard push. Like, if you want to think about it this way, if your opponent gets down to one life, which is not hard to do in a rush deck like that, paying four for this, Go or for this Gohan leaves one energy up compared to the five that you would have paid for the SR Goku. Then on top of that, he also comes out with 5k more power. So he's going to, or sorry, he's going to come out with 5k more power, so he's going to also get another 5k. So he's going to be a 45 to your normal goku's 40 that's going to be great as a base to start with and you have one more energy up so you can use that with kamehameha or um or uh, assemble universe 7 either way he's got a lot of play he can do for that game push now the funny thing about this as well is that of course he's also going to be able to do the same thing in starter coup come down for an energy cheaper have uh we go up 5k he's going to do a lot of good things for that final life push but the part where he becomes really really nutty is the new Goku that we're getting in set to. For one energy, you'll be able to throw this guy out and just have a 40k beat stick, which is going to press, push pressure like nobody would believe. You shouldn't underestimate something like that. That is just a lot of power on a card for one energy. So not only does this card look great, not only is he best boy, not only is he just simply in my collection as a 4 of this guy pushes power he pushes weight and will be seen closing out a great mini game so keep an eye out for him the next one we have here is a goku black card right four cost 30k power 5k combo power when attacking you if you have, if you have seven or fewer cards in your hand choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards the cost of two or less place at the bottom of your owner's deck or of its owner's deck now this is actually good for a lot of reasons uh its effect is going to hit a whole bunch of cards in yellow a whole bunch of cards in red and um, it can even hit a fair amount of blue cards that are going to be doing good things. But the bigger part of it is that it is a Goku Black, meaning that if you can awaken super fast, and uh, hint, hint, not judge, you see a Mai or two, and you definitely can in blue, you're going to be able to play this guy out for two by bottom decking the Zamasu. You can play Zamasu for one, bottom deck a one drop, maybe even get a swing with it if you want a combo just to you know be on that aggression and then just bottom deck him to be able to play this guy for two and then have a 30k beater for two. That's huge. That's simply huge. Um, 30k for two is a number of stat line that we really haven't seen in this game. So this is going to be a pretty monumental swing. Uh, its effect isn't the uh, most amazing effect, but the momentum you can get for a 30k for 2 will help Goku Black cascade in a very, very powerful way. Plus, that effect can be really, really good, coupled with another card that we see later, and potentially more cards coming out for blue in the future. So, next 
We're looking at Paragus. I don't know why he's got the T pose for dominance almost. But uh, he's a two cost, 20k, 5k combo power. When KO'd, if you have six or more energy, add up to one Broly BR from your drop to your hand. Um, currently, that is only Broly BR 8 from the starter deck. But this guy is uh, kind of mid for a lot of reasons. One, he's not a blocker. Otherwise, that'd be kind of broken, but he's not a blocker. So the KO has to happen via, you know, you have to swing on him. You can just let, you can just combo out of his 20k every turn, never swing on him. And what, what is this guy going to do? There's no way to force him into the uh, drop when your opponent doesn't want him to be in the drop. So effectively, you just pay 2 for a 20k beater, which isn't bad stat-wise. 20k for 2 with an effect is not bad. He can harass neutral on the leader for a long time if they ever get rid of him. Bang, you got what you need. But I just don't see this card really being good because he's not proactive enough. Your opponent has to let you have his effect. That's kind of rough. However, just note that if it's adding up to one Broly BR from your drop to your hand and there's no cost restriction or cost range, we're probably getting more in this set, if not next set, if not some sort of little extra pack that they do later, a promo or something. But hey, this is pretty cool for implications, just not really cool as a card. Next, we've got this dude. We got Vegeta. Ah, man. Yellow is shaping up, man. Permanent. During your opponent's turn, all of your rest mode battle cards cannot be KO'd by your opponent's skills. Then on play, add up to one card from your life to your hand, then play up to one battle card with the cost of one or less from your hand. So um, this combo is extremely well with Bulma. Extremely well. Because you're sitting at a point where, one, this guy turns sideways, right? And when he turns sideways, we are looking at a position where your opponent has to swing into your cards. And yellow is not really known for not having access to blockers like that. So yellow is, you're going to force them to the battle step. Now granted, that effect doesn't stop things from being tucked, bounced, or uh, minus to zero. But it effectively stops a whole slew of red cards, such as SR Son Goku, such as Beerus. Um, it'll stop cards like um, like uh, Time Skip and Kamehameha. Let me actually make sure. Let me make sure it's by uh, card effects. Yeah. So uh, Kamehameha and Time Skip won't be able to touch it. Um, but then in green, it pretty much forces green to have to attack your cards, which is rough because that is one of green's biggest points when you face the yellow matchup, using both your swings and your effects to lessen the field so that you can survive. But being able to play a card like Bulma is also crazy. Like the fact that the fact that Vegeta comes out, like just the synergy, right? Um, on play, add up to one card from your life to your hand, and then play up to one battle card at the cost of one or less from your hand, okay? You play the Bulma. After you play the Bulma, you then attack with the Vegeta for the 20k. Then you activate a uh, battle with the Bulma, switch this card to rest mode, add up to one card from your life to your hand, cool. And then you can uh, either tap something on your opponent's board, or if you have a rest mode battle card at the cost of three or more, draw a card. So you can actually just draw two after swinging your Vegeta. And the best part about this now is your opponent has to swing in the bowl if they want to get rid of it. Not exactly the hardest part, but they can't just two for one you unless you're playing red. Like green can't two for one you with like, okay, I'm going to swing into this, but I'm going to swing into Vegeta. No, that's just not going to happen. So I think that this is just stellar. Uh, these cards really are doing damage. And I just, ah, yellow is getting better and better. Just forcing them into the battle, it, potentially in a leader that can very much so prote uh, protect itself by untapping the two and having the cards to use in hand. Very, very, very nice. So, yeah, Vegeta's going off. Then we have Vegito. And this is actually going to be a really, really cool concept. Three cost, 25k power. Great stats for that. That's just vanilla stats. Well, not quite vanilla stats, but a little under. Um, you got 5k combo power. Permanent, your turn. If you have seven or fewer cards in your hand, reduce the cost of battle cards in your opponent's battle area by one. And then on play, choose up to one of your ba opponent's battle cards at the cost of one or less and place it at the uh, bottom of its own deck. This gets in the face of red. This just completely spits on yellow because now with a Vegeta on the board, Vegeta on the board, they cannot out. Like you put this guy down for three and you remove a two drop if you have the correct cards in hand but now actually on play you just remove the two drop period but now the following turn as long as you get down to that seven or less there is not a single card revealed so far or in the game so far that in yellow that blue cannot sinister sickle that's disgusting you can sinister sickle a five drop golden frieza <laughs> and a and a cooler and your opponent's just like wow like that's just that's not a place that yellow wants to be in so we still have a lot of more yellow cards to see, and I've been like hypothesizing if we get a Whis 
I can't see Whis being under six cost. You know, um, if we get like something like Golden Freeze, I can't see it either. A Goku and Vegeta, who knows? Maybe those can stay, but I can't see the other ones being less than that. So I just foresee Yellow still having a little bit of time struggling because a lot of their cards can just be insert mood by blue and that gets rid of or around some of the protection they just got so real quick let's have a word from our sponsor though and when i said sponsor i meant two of them first we have mystic tcg that is a, a place based in missouri that has its own tournaments sells all the tcg things that you could ever want and its own merch so all you got to do is go over to their site you can use my code unixtcg to get discounts make sure you pre-order all of your cards from there they have a pretty good system set up so that everybody can get their stuff shipped out from them across the united states also if you're in the area always check them out for locals because they hold a great deal of them and eden is a slow guy it's just awesome to be there and then the other one i have is for my canadian homies you've got g3 uh the g3 is much akin to like the store i just mentioned missy ccg where they will actually hold a bunch of uh events they have their online site you can go down in the description and check my codes in order to get discounts off of theirs it will be more pricey if you live in america however if you live in canada that is the store for you go die there and uh let john i know i said hello at some point and with that being said, let us get back into the card reviews. So finishing up with these uh, reveals, we have the 8-drop Cell that I was talking about. And uh, when I said I was talking about, it just all made sense. Cell has an effect that you use at, at 5 energy. And um, unless they would only like you to use that effect once per game, they would have to have ways to get you back down to 5 energy. And this is it right here. Um, now, a lot of people are looking at this effect and they're wowing out. I personally think that this cell is actually balanced to a high degree for a couple reasons. So let's go over its effect real quick. 8 cost, 0 combo power, 45k swing. On play, place 3 cards from your energy into your drop. Choose up to 2 of your opponent's battle cards and KO them. Then add the top card of your deck to your life. So here's a couple things, right? One of the main things I think is the worst issue about Burly is that you can sequentially drop him. Every turn that you have Burly past turn or past uh, eight energy, you can play Burly. Cell automatically hinders himself from doing that in multiple ways. The placing three cards from your energy into your drop is perfect because it sets you to a point where you have to spend an entire turn ramping, um, most of your energy ramping, to get back to using him again. And a lot of people uh, don't understand this, but no matter how you cut it, it's the same way. If you just have this guy on your board and you go from 8 to 5 and then you use Cell's effect to get back up to 6, um, you then next turn still have to ramp one. You have to charge one to go to 7 and ramp one to go up to 8 or charge one to go up to 7 and the next turn charge to go up to 8. Um, you probably want to stay on 8 so you can either ramp this turn or maybe next turn but then don't play anything because if you do and you go up to 9, you know, you're not going to be able to use your leader effect. But this is just a really cool thing to do to kind of gap that cell can only be played at max right now every other turn and i think that's exactly where you need to be now the other thing about this is um even if you have five drop goku out which a lot of people are pointing out well, what about five drop goku five drop goku will instantly take you from five to six because of his effect you got rid of three energy at the same time that has been confirmed by fashbinder uh fashbinder the um the uh tier zero judge for dragon ball super uh and this if you have Goku on board, he's going to instantly take you from 5 to 6, skipping out on your leader effect because you are no longer at 5. So no matter how you cut this cookie, you are only going to be able to use Cell at max, at quickest speeds every other turn. And I think that's something that Burley should have had a long time ago. Now, the synergy with this guy and the Cell Juniors is kind of wild. Cell Juniors, as far as I remember, does not have a once per turn. Just checking this real quick. Cell Junior does not have a once per turn. That's a problem. So as long as you have the Cell Battle card with a cost of 8 uh, in your uh, Battle Era, you can use this, uh, you can play this card from your, uh, your hand without paying your cost. Extra add up to 1 extra from your drop to your hand. So um, this can potentially cause some crazy plays. If you already have something like a Double Strike on board and you hit somebody with Cell and then, you know, you play two Cell Juniors, gain back, like, I don't know, a Gigantic Meteor and uh, a Super Kamehameha, you have, like, or an Instant Kamehameha, you have a lot of things you can do. You get swing with that Android 17 and 18, Gigantic Meteor bringing it up to 55, and then Instant Kamehameha bringing it up to 70, and then the Cell and the Cell, the Cell Junior and the Cell Junior comboing as well. 
to put him up even higher, and then you just drop the rest of your hand. Like, there are some nasty combos that uh, Cell Jr. can bring to the party. However, um, it is a bit of a setup. We do have the draw and, you know, capabilities to get that in hand, but we're really gonna have to see how Cell plays out in this format, because I don't think that Cell is snapped as Broly, simply because it has diminishing returns. You have to wait until you can reload. There's no Cell into Cell into Cell. Why did he just gain three life and blow up six cards? No, you have some time to take that life back. You actually have some time to attempt to take the game back in general. So, I'm really feeling it. I'm I'm really digging Cell as a boss card because I think that they did their best to balance him. Uh, and then we have Rumshi. Rumshi is a 5 cost 10k combo power, 30k power. That's strong. God Destruction if we ever get like an archetype theme for them. On play, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards or 30k power or less and KO it. This is um, a little interesting. So... I guess that's pretty cool. 30k power uh, or less and KO it. So combo, uh, comboing very, very well with Beerus, you can destroy up to 45ks with just your leader and this guy in hand and 5 energy. Just, um, well, 40ks. You just drop them down to 30 and you play this. Choose up to one of your battle cards. Yep, 30k power or less and KO it. So blow that guy out the water. If you have something like a Wii on board, you can also minus it by 5, minus it by 10, then play this and you can get rid of 45ks too. I think Rumshi is interesting. Five is a little, five is a little hefty, but 30k power or less is very, very strong. I think that in most red decks, this is, you, this is player preference, but I think in Beerus, this might actually be like a staple. It being a 10k and just being able to snipe like this might just make it a staple. But we are getting more and more cards in the set that just straight up ignore the uh, straight up ignore destruction effect. So we really do kind of have to see how this plays out. But I think Rumshi is pretty cool. And the last one we have today, we've got Frieza. Um, three cost, 20k. Even though he's in a pod, that's how formidable Frieza is. 10k combo value. This card's got good stats for the most part all around. Auto on your turn, once per turn. When this card is switched to active mode by skill, choose up to one of your opponent's that rest, uh, rest mode battle cards at the cost of four or less, and it can't switch to active mode during your opponent's turn. This is going to be annoying. While he doesn't have Awakening on it or anything, in a more controlled game state, this guy is going to be able to do quite a lot. Playing himself, swinging for 20k neutral to the leader, untapping with Frieza's leader ability or Cooler's ability, and then permanent, well, for the rest of the turn, locking down something that could have been a threat the following turn. So, this guy is going to get a lot of mileage out of it, and I think that because he is a 10k combo value, you really can just sneak this in your deck and know that at worst, he's going to be able to protect you via combo. So I'm really liking this card, but I do want to see how he's playing out because I do think that you need to be able to test this card to know how strong it really is. So with that said, I just want to let you guys know that we are having a lot of fun with this game, even still. Um, set 2 looks like it's going to be a hoot. And uh, yeah, like I said, keep stay tuned to this channel to see more content on it, uh, more gameplay. Um, I should be back to streaming very uh well this week and by should i mean i am uh i think tonight we will see what we can do but i just got back in from a wedding uh in uh st croix so i'm actually pretty bushed if not tonight we start our streaming you know, on thursday and then we'll have a consistent streaming schedule from then on out alternating between dragon ball super fusion world and uh kingdom hearts actually and while we're cleaning up the patreon in splash i just wanted to give a special shout out to the members that do the most here uh we got the realm of xers being big daddy flapjack virars uh the bryce R's, the kevin eyes and the mr top decks but we've also got the universal aristocrats including eric r jonathan b Kizan k and actually mario so thank you guys for supporting the channel thank you guys for giving me the extra oomph i appreciate it and we are going to be diving headlong into more stuff because i'm freeing up more and more work uh, off my part time to be able to dive into consecration because we're getting there we're getting there so thank you guys i will see you in the very next video article or social media post later